Okay, so I am doing my Tropical Nova, I call it. It's Supernova with some chevrons. I did a live video with uh, Scott Raddyes Walker and I made something different. So this is my re redo. So anyway, so I find the center by going like an inch down, same way I did on the messed up video. And I have a little screw hole here, which I'll put the screw in when I go to uh, draw my lines. Get my protractor, center it on there. Make my first little arc. Then I go 90 degrees, 45 degrees, 67 and a half, 22 and a half. And this is a nice uh, see-through protractor, so I can uh, flip it over if I need to change the the degrees. So you don't have to like add stuff and subtract stuff. And you know, Scott had a little bit of a hard time with his. His doesn't do that. So anyway, so there's all the beginning lines. What I do is I take a piece of string. And I have loops already pre-made for distances that I have predetermined are pleasing. I'll move this clamp. And I'll go ahead and draw this first arc. And then I'll draw one more, second one. Then what I do is I'll figure out somewhere in between, it looks roughly halfway. And I'll make and I'll loop it around the screw and stick my marker in the little loop I created. It's about halfway between those lines. And I hold on to this so it doesn't pull and keep it tight. I don't lose my arc. I don't want it to get longer or shorter. It'll change. It won't be in the symmetrical. Okay, so after I do that, go ahead and draw these lines. And these are the center lines of, of a fan, right, which are the ray lines, which would be if I was doing a supernova or a fan fold, I'd fold right on these. But since we're doing my tropical nova, you'll see I'll draw arcs, or I mean, uh, sorry, chevrons. I'll draw chevrons out to actually between these lines. And see, so I keep the, the mark on the same side of the screw, and that's roughly the center. It's close enough for what we're doing. So do that, and then I measure between these. And I make my little marks. And see this out here, this kind of goes like that. So we'll measure out here, get the center of that, center between those two. It's just, it's fairly rough. It doesn't have to be perfect. Because with, uh, with ice dye, you know, nothing's really perfect anyway. So I'll make the marks on the centers up there, then I'll do the ones down here. So it's one, two, three, so it's one and a half. And you could eyeball it too. Like I say, with ice dye, it's, it's pretty liberal. It ends up looking really good in the end anyway, because the, you know, the dye stays on the, on the pleats mostly. OK, 
Okay, so then I have that. That's the center of the tip of my first chevron. Well, you know what? I should do this a different color. That's a mistake. Yeah. I'll do it a different color so I'll know which one to fold on. Yeah, that was that was an error, that, that chevron. Screw now, we don't need that. And these don't have to be perfect. Like I say, with ice dye, the dye is going to go, going to go around quite a bit, move around, flow where gravity takes it, because it's an incline. This is an incline dye. Then we just mark all these out and then we'll do the same thing with the next row. And see, I've got that mark up there. So we just extend it as if it's part of the shirt. Keep everything symmetrical. Put this guy back on so that while we're folding the center lines of the front and back don't get screwed up so let's see that extends about out to there so we'll measure that we got one two three five and a half two and three quarters this one's this one's a little bit different but it's okay it's six don't mind So we'll go three. We'll go three tiers on this one. And we'll just go two and three quarters out here because I or, yeah, because that's what it is. It's roughly there. So it's just this one line on this one. Nothing there. This one will go two and three quarters. Line extends about out to here, so we'll go to that angle. And this one we don't really care. We'll just we'll pretend it's out here somewhere just to get something in there so it looks symmetrical. It's gonna be hard to fold this anyway because it's on. A lot of stitching there it's okay so there's that clear all the junk out of the way I'm gonna flip my board around so I can so I can use my little uh, backdrop stop over here to do the folding on such a nice addition to a folding board having a nice straight edge that you can uh, fold everything against sure it stays flat looks pretty good and I'll just start going 
So I'll start from the inside on this one. I think on that other video I started from the outside. Doesn't really matter. And if you give these a little curve, they look a lot more like leaves. So it's kind of nice. My original one, I think I just free, I just free handed it. And so we pinch that. Let me get my little tool here. Can't even see my board. There's the little board. Yeah, so we can we can push against this once we get started. And then I'll go up here. You, you kind of want to go vertically a little bit to keep it uh, from bunching up too much. And I'll pinch it. Like I say, you don't have to be right on the lines as long as they're pretty close. You can see. And I push down in the middle with this one to create the chevron, the little leaf as it's going to be in the final product. That's why I call it the tropical. I think these look like uh, tropical plant leaves. Now, once again, you want to make sure that all the pleats, the fabric, are indeed flat to each other because the contact is what uh, causes the dye to transfer from one layer to the next on the uh, the dying portion of this. Let's we'll see if we can push this up against here. Once once we get this, we want to keep want to keep all of these little chevrons. We pinch them pretty good, and we pull them up. We want to keep them in line as far as level to top, because that's a surface area. We'll lay the die on top of here. And this out here, we can just well. Yeah, we'll just make a little, little crease here to keep it up. Have a little pleat up here on this end. And then this guy. I like to pinch him at the at the tip here. Push down to create the the valley there that's gonna be the uh, create the chevron pattern. And then at the end here, we'll pull it up so everything's like at the same, roughly the same level. Uh, and I'll go back here. I'm getting a little ahead, but it's okay. As long as the pleats, you got to make sure you feel all the pleats are stacked on top of each other. Not the pleats, the layers of fabric. I'm going to stay on top of each other. You just work it a little bit. Pinch it here, push down, pinch a little tight. This shirt's not too damp. It's okay. These big ones aren't that bad. When you get really short, intricate ones, having a damp shirt helps a lot. And you want to keep all these black lines in a row. You want to keep them lined up. That means everything's vertical, standing upright. So the dye will flow the same down each one of these little chevrons. Little plant leaves, which are little flower leaves, I like to call them that tropical effect and a little far off there the board's really good once you get going in the beginning it's kind of in the way a little bit push everything down pinch it right here on the black line Get that little fold going. Pinch that. That fold can be a little tricky down here. But once you get it going, it kind of falls together. And push it down. Pinch it up here. Pinch it up at the tip. And then we'll push all those together like that. And this guy is also going to fall in here. 
Now we're getting started. Now we're getting somewhere. We got a few of them going. We could take a clamp and we could clamp all this together too. Once I get another one of these here, I'll, I'll put a clamp on it so we don't lose it. Just waste time. Later back, later on, we'd have to come back and clean it up a lot if you know falls apart. A lot of times I'll just freeform these and go, but since I'm trying to show you how to do it, I'll try to be more accurate. You end up with you end up with a nice effect either way. down make sure all the fabric layers are nice and touching yeah so, so we got a pretty good little start up here on top got a bunch of these done this guy got a little wonky we'll pull her out here Pushing up underneath to make sure all the layers of fabric are indeed touching. It's very important on the dyeing process. I have these clamps. And I'll stick one of these. You can get these at Home Depot or somewhere. Pretty useful. Stick it down in. Try to keep everything in line, straightened up. There we go. So that one, that area is done. See, we could we could push this up against here now. Once we start getting the the folds, the pleats, all the chevrons going over on this area. So you pull it around because it's in a circular pattern. You got to pull your shirt around. Get everything lined up. See these black lines want to be lined up here. Clamped it a little bit off, but we'll, we'll clean it up here. Pinch it right on that guy. Push down here. Make sure all those pleats or the fabric uh, layers are touching. Got that one. This guy we kind of lost. There we go. And we can use this to pull stuff up to these little tweezers, these nice little tweezers. They look good. Clean this up. And if you feel like, you know, the fabric isn't lined up on the bottom, on the lower uh, layers, Go back and flatten it. There's no hurry, right? We're going to try to do a good job. The more accurate we are, the smaller the margin of error. But once again, with ice dye, the dye is going to flow where it flows. This isn't going to be super accurate like a liquid dye. I don't know if you guys can see this, if this clamp's in the way. I'm just pinching these things up. Turn the, turn the room on this way, maybe. We can see a little better. I'm just pinching these guys. This one here's got a little out of whack. Pinch it, pull it up, keep this guy in line. Get wrinkles out, pinch it, pull it up. Get all these green lines on top. The green lines are on top. Where we're going to lay our die. Yeah, it's a little, a little tricky down in here. It's pretty tight. Yes, if it was a little more damp, let me uh, get my spray bottle. Damp these guys up a little. If you get too much water, the fabric markers will start to run. So that can be an issue. Can we go down here? Yeah. A little moisture really helps. Pinch this guy in the middle there. And the back of this tool is rounded, so it really works. Doesn't uh, 
tear, rip, poke holes. It's important to have a nice blunt tool. You don't want anything too sharp. It's going to damage your fabric, whatever garment you're tying up. And we'll pinch that pretty tight in there. Keep that going. These guys up here look all right. And we'll go up to this one. So you can put a little clampy guy on here. I know a lot of the guys put 10 or 20 clamps on their things. I don't always do it. I just kind of motor through. So we'll use this to push down. Try to keep my arm out of the way, but you want to pinch. I'll put the crease up here. Like I said, it doesn't have to be right on the line. As a matter of fact, these are a little too close together to even do. But if you get some curve to the to the pattern, the chevrons, like I say, it looks like leaves. It's kind of what makes this uh, this fold. And pull tight. Make sure there's no wrinkles underneath. Use this guy to push down. And this one here can come up a little if it's uh, if it's going to be in the way. Just down here at the bottom, because that's where you'd start another chevron if we were if we had another layer there, another row. I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this stuff together here. Pinch that off. Yeah, it's starting to come together now. Yeah, we'll pinch this guy. Increase that. Increase this guy here. Pinch it, pull it up. Yeah, I think the the layers of fabric got wonky under there. I don't want that. So I'll try it again. I'll pinch it back behind where the tip is. And we'll crease it down. Then we'll grab all of it at once. Pull it up. And just like if you're making a fan fold. If you want one of these pleats to be taller. The one next to it has to be come to shorten a little. right? Because it's all give and take. And everything to be even so go back here and get rid of any wrinkles wrinkles can have cool effects but I'm trying to just get clean get the clean lines on the chevrons here Use this tool again push down push down keep these black lines centered center of the chevron right up to the tip of this one Just got to pinch it, make a point. Use the tool to reach in there and pull that one up. Just pull these guys up. Yep. Come along pretty good now. About halfway through, I think. down pinch it off there we go try to keep that black line in the center there get everything lined up you know you could do these random too you don't have to draw at all you can just make your arcs and do them randomly out and that looks really cool like I always say is if you want to be random or sloppy you need to be pretty sloppy you don't want to look like you tried to make it perfect and then if it's not perfect you know, the shirt doesn't come out as pleasing. So if you're going for perfection, really try to get perfection. If you're going for imperfection, you know, try to get pretty imperfect. <laughs> that way it looks like you knew what you're doing. The shirt comes out a little more even, more symmetrical. Unless you're going for asymmetrical. I mean, that's a whole other thing. All right. Pinch that guy, pull it up, use a little tool here, push down. See, and push it against the board, and that tightens everything up up here. All this looks pretty nice. Keeping everything, once again, the same level. So the die has a nice surface area to lie on. And we'll go down here. Pinch this guy here. Yeah, 
So you kind of got to, when you do this line, you got to come up here and do this one. Because as we move, you kind of got to work, work vertically. So try not to mess up the stuff you've already done. I mean, you're going to have to go back and clean up. Keep pushing it against this board. It's such a good guide. Get this guy over here. See, we're getting towards the uh, some stitching here on the uh, sleeves. So on these shirts, particularly, since they're a little bit stiff, they take the dye really well. They're pretty easy to fold, except around the stitching. They get all bunched up. Uh, so pull it around. It goes around. So I keep this on her so everything stays straight here. The front and back look similar. And I say similar because it's ice dye. If you're doing liquid dye, you can get a pretty close exact. Ice dye is more tough, but sometimes it works out. I like all the, uh, the differences that you get between shirts with ice dye. The different flows, the front to back can be different. And you see how there's like a little black ri the ridge here on the black. That's nice and lined up. You keep that there. That becomes the point of the chevron. The dye will fill that in. Liquid or ice. It's kind of nice. You could try to make this dead vertical and go straight down. This lump here and push it down and pull this up. And I think that's what Stephen Jay does on his. But he's making really tiny chevrons. He needs every bit of fabric that he can uh, pull to try to get each one the same. And he's such a perfectionist. That guy's amazing. Check out his work. Stephen J, the master of the zigzag chevrons. He's quite amazing. Uh, pull that up. Pull this, push, use your tool. Push that in, pull this guy up, line it up, push it in. Some more creases on there. We'll get a little more liquid on here. Like, I don't uh, start out with a damp shirt necessarily because I found that uh, I make so many, and for me to like spin each one out, I just wash a whole bunch, put them in a bag. Um, I did them in a bag damp before, and you end up with a little mildew or molding problem. It doesn't really seem to hurt the shirt, or that, and the dye works right through it, but I didn't like the idea of that. So I keep them in the bag dry. That's kind of how I've, I've done it. And then I'll pull them out when I want and just wet them with a little bit of water. This is just plain water. There's no soda ash, nothing there. I don't like soda ash on my hands. I just, it makes them dry. I don't think it's good for you, but from what Mr. Tie-Dye says is you could actually, I put this under here to push up on the, the layers of fabric once again. Try to keep everything flat. So make sure the fabric's all touching every layer. Yeah, Mr. Tie-Dye says that uh, you can get an allergic reaction. I believe anything he says. That guy's been dying for years and years and years. Ten times as long as me. He knows his stuff. But you can get an uh, allergic reaction to soda ash. And uh, it could become a permanent, according to him, it could become a permanent allergy. And then, you know, dying is really difficult if you're dying natural fiber. Uh without soda ash, that's pretty much what we use to, uh, to bond, to fix the dye, right? That's what the soda ash is, it's a fixer. It fixes the dye to the fabric. And there's other chemicals people use, like globber salt. That one is used for turquoise it uh, it's not a fixer but it uh, it helps some of the dyes fiber or the dye fibers to uh, or the dye molecules to dissolve and then be allowed to fix to the I know someone will probably correct me on that I'm not an expert on it but I always put a little globber salt when I'm putting uh, using uh, turquoise in particular just what I've read. I'm supposed to use Glauber salt for that. And then there's urea, which helps the dye flow through the garment. And the same thing with uh, calcelene oil. Let's see. So we'll, we'll put a little crease. We'll just bring this guy up like a fan here. 
little fan fold crease. See, and this board is really nice to push stuff against. And we got just working here, cleaning stuff up. Like right here, these seams, this is a trouble spot. I work a little harder here to get this fabric underneath all lined up. Touching each other so the die will flow vertically, you know, however gravity pulls it down to the bottom layer of fabric. So everything wants to be touching, top to bottom, on these four layers of fabric on this on these centered shirts. And we try to keep everything the same level. Nice surface area to lay the die on. We don't want a lot of crevices. When we're finally done, we tie this up. I tie this up loose. You can use string. I use used sinew. That's just use it and wrap it around loosely. Not loosely, but not super tight. You'll see. Let me get this guy going up here. Line up this ray line, the black or the ray lines. We keep those nice and lined up. Make sure that the fabric underneath is all touching. I use this tool, push it up. There we go. Pinch this thing off again here. Push that in, pull that guy around. So as we go, you know, with these, you have to pull everything around. That's right. That's how the fans work. When you're doing any kind of circular folding, trying to get concentric circle lines. Pinch that guy there. We'll push her down here. Take both of these. Pull it up. And we'll come back down here. And make sure these guys are all nice, centered. Clean them up. Pinch it down here and push down. Pinch that guy. Pinch that guy. Push this stuff all in. Starts to ride up a little. We'll be cleaning this up as we go. So a little moisture helps, right? It helps the pleats to uh, be compressed. It helps the fabric to compress the layers of fabric together and create nice tight pleats. If it's dry, it doesn't want to do that. Cotton's nice when you uh, trying to work with it. You can add some water, manipulate it better. Hey, hey. Dog going nuts over there or something. Probably the mail guy or something. Who knows? Delivery. Getting towards the end here. Just about done folding these things. Pinch it down here, push in the center there, pull that guy up. You can use your fingers, use the tool. It's kind of nice. See, this is where I made the, the mistake on the beginning of the very first mark I made. I used black, but I know it's supposed to be green. So now we can take that guy off. This is our last chevron here. And this is a tough area. We got the collar here, right? That's a hard area. Make sure we get the fabric underneath the back of the shirt. So we'll get those chevrons back there, the little, little pointy plant leaves for the tropical design. Pull that one up, that one. So you got multiple fingers you're using, I'm using here. I'm trying to keep stuff going. Let's make sure this guy's nice and flat under there on the back. Yeah, that's good. And even if the collars shift a little like that and don't line up perfect, it's okay. The dye is going to flow over a lot of this, and there'll be some detail. We're just trying to get detail on the on the uh, create the pleats we're making for the chevrons. That's the important thing: is the, these chevron pleats. And here's the final one up here. Push that guy there. Pull it up. This is a tough one here, getting this right. 
collar is always a pain in the butt, but as long as we make an effort at it, it'll be dyed on. It'll look pretty. Like this one here, I put that little green line. Well, let's see, what do we do with this? Make sure this guy's good. It's our last full pleat, last full chevron. Fold this guy here, just give it a little one. And it's getting apart a little. Let's push that back in. Let the stuff stay kind of lined up. Looks more symmetrical at the end. All right. Put a little pleaty guy there. Go on that green one kind of ish. Pinch it. Pull this loose stuff down. We don't want too many wrinkles. Push it up in there. There we go. That letter there. We'll get this one here. Pinch this thing. These aren't going to be perfect. At least we're trying, though, right? We're trying to do as best we can to make everything nice and symmetrical on the shirt. All right, so basically, we've got the majority of this done here now. Put that aside there. Yeah, uh, let some of this since we don't, we're not worried about the lines anymore. We uh, think we can put some water on there and let them blur. Not too concerned with that at this point. Everything's in place roughly. And we'll be going back and cleaning up as we go. All right, I'm gonna get some of my used sinew here. And I just have it in these balls. I don't care. When I took it off a different shirt, I wrap it around my hand, wash it, make sure there's no dye on it. And I'll just untie a little bit, find an end somewhere in here. And we don't find an end, we'll just cut it, because I just tie it together. You can see there's knots in here. I don't care. You could use string, thread, anything you want. Whatever you got in. Yeah, it's garbage. And we'll get these things out of here. There's a, there's a nice end. Okay. And we'll start up here. No reason other than it's tied up. If I start in the bottom, I'll probably flop this all around and it'll it'll get all messy. That bottom there is all held together by the end there. So I'll put a nice little sun ray at the bottom there, a little fan. I do a slip knot, just a little granny knot around there. And pull that thing in. We could clean it up later, make sure everything's nice and flat on top. This clamp doesn't need to be here anymore. It probably was hindering us in some way. But we can clean up some of this. Looks like this, the fabric on here, the layers on the sleeve didn't quite stay. So I push that under there, pull it up. Same with all these, clean these up a bit. Like I said, we can go back later, clean stuff up after it's tied, but see, it's a little easier now to, to get at it before we, before we loosely tie it. See, I don't pull this super tight. I just, just enough to keep it in one place because I want the dye to flow. I want everything, I want the dye to flow through. There's a flowing design, similar to a supernova, starburst, whatever you like to call them. And we got our, well, Bunch of used sinew here, whatever. You can use anything you want. Doesn't affect the dye or the fold in any way. Whatever you use to wrap this dye, this uh, fold. this down now we push away from the board since you know it's it's being tied up at the loose end everything will kind of stay and straighten stuff up here pinch it pretty good makes the pleats tight let's uh let's line stuff up a little better here as far as a nice level up here 
nice level area to, to lay the die, a little platform as it is. Clean up a little. Pull this one tight. You can pull it tight there and work our way down, right? Pull it there, pull it there, and take a little slack. Like these knots, they don't they don't affect anything. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to recycle, use old product. You know, throwing stuff away is uh, it's something bugs the heck out of me. All the stuff in the landfill. And just go around the end, pull it. Like I'll cut this stuff off here when I'm done. This extra frayed bit of sinew. Some of this is standing up a little too tall. We take our tool, push it down. Get that nice flat layer that we want. And we, once again, the black lines on, on the tips the black lines on the tips of your chevrons, your little leaf structures, want to be lined up on the top, on the uh, top edge, if you can. Just keeps it symmetrical with the design. Doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said, we'll clean it up here a little bit. We'll just do this guy. Pinch it right there. Like that. Push it back. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Let's pull up. You don't want anything to dip down below the top level because that'll be a low spot where the dye will accumulate. You'll have a little river of dye when it dissolves into your melting ice. And we don't want to have rivers of dye. We want to have everything flow through the fabric. We don't want it to run helter-skelter down the top of our shirt, now do we? Try to have some little bit of control over this, as much as you can have in an ice dye, it's, which isn't much. But a little bit. Every little bit helps. So, if, you know, we try to be as perfect as possible. The... Uh, the errors tend to be fewer and farther between. You know, if, you, if you're really sloppy, you're going to have a little bigger chance of having a bunch of errors. Areas of the shirt that don't, you know, coincide with the pattern we're trying to create. So I'm gonna squ I squeeze it with my hand a little bit. Keep it flat. Keep your finger on there tight. See, this one got a little looser. We'll tighten her up with this. Squeeze it tight, and this guy goes over there. We pull that one out. Pull this one tight. There we go. That's better. And wrap it around again. Get some of that junk out of the way. Well, it's a pretty nice surface area there to lay some dye. So, okay, we'll take this thing out of here. Get in here and clean these guys up pretty good. Little, little technical ones down here. Yeah, as long as everything's pretty flat on top, you know you did it all right. Everything's at the same level. Ish. I say ish. But what we don't want is like these holes here. See how this hole? Try to tighten stuff up so that we don't have powdered dye falling down into those holes. That creates the splotches and blotches on the final shirt. Which sometimes they're okay, but I try to get rid of that stuff. Bugs me. All right. Go on this side now. Pull it. Hold it. And these edges here now, remember, this is the back center of the shirt, or the, no, this is the uh, armpits, sorry. 
This will be the armpits. You want to get to that with touching. Keep that green line on top. Push down. Pull this up. We don't want too many wrinkles. We don't want this the little flaps here to be wrinkled. We want them to be straight. And we're gonna try to get some dye to, to saturate evenly. And now this is the front edge here, right? We got the collar right here. So this is the front center and the back center, right? The centers, front and back, are these two little flaps here. So we want to try to make sure that those are nice and neat on the full, without too many wrinkles or anything. And that we also can get dye to saturate evenly on those. It looks pretty bad when the front center of your shirt has some uh, screwed up spots, you know, where the dye isn't evenly saturated or distributed. So that's the first thing people see when they look at you wearing a shirt, right? Is that front center. That's an important focal point. That's one thing Justin Biffer used to always, on his early videos, when he was doing the HWI, the hot water irrigation, he was always talking about the focal point, the, the pattern of the shirt. You want to have a nice focal point. It's such an important thing to remember. Okay, let's flatten this out down here. Make sure that all the layers of fabric are touching each other. Use this tool to make that crease. That This tool actually, I got it because I was uh, learning how to do pleated spirals. Uh, Timothy, Timofey Maliarev uh, and his disciples, them Russian guys, they're really cool, really good. What's the guy's name? Kozlov. They're really, and they uh, they stress using these tools to like split pleats and grab your pleats and use the rounded edge to push down. I mean, they actually filed down some of these tools to make them flatter so they're not sharp. Yeah, you can create your own tool. Take it to a workshop and. Uh, file down so that you're not going to have anything that's going to damage your garment. All this hard work will be to waste. We put a hole in it, right? Or a rip or a tear. It's okay. Pull this guy up, this guy. All these guys look pretty good here. So the chevron pleating looks like it's pretty good, pretty complete. Oops. Keep your hand on there nice and flat. So that when you when you pull this, you don't want it too tight, but you want it to everything to stay. All those little chevrons look like they're pretty lined up there on top. Cool. Okay, now we'll get in here. Like I was saying, I like to do like a little thingy. Grab this here and push down on it and pull the point so you can create some, some fabric for you to work with. And I like to line up right on top of these guys. We'll do a little fan in here. It looks nice, some little sun rays or something. And then we'll go right into our, what could be the center of the flower, because this is the tropical design, as I call it. So it's like the center of the flower. It'd be nice, have some little, little lines going right out to these little leaf structures, which are the chevrons in the design. Okay, we pull those. That looks pretty good there. Keep them flat. Grab this guy. Make sure that edge there is good. And see, now this line here, this is our, our black line, is our symmetrical, it's our most innermost symmetrical arc. And so when we place the die, we want to place it on this line, no matter what angle it's at, because that's going to be, that's going to determine whether or not the circle is round in the center of our shirt, right? Is it going to be a sun or the center of a, of a flower, whatever design it, you think it looks like. I like to straighten all these guys up pretty good. It probably won't even matter because I'll probably just put a whole bunch of yellow right down here. 
Okay, I'm not going to be too worried about this little area in here anymore. There'll be a bunch of yellow or red, orange, some nice bright colors in here. And get the, remember this is the center of your shirt, so make sure these little flaps on the ends are nice and pinch it off like that. Pinch it. Yeah, a little, pull a little tight guy on that, pull that guy a little tighter. Do a couple of little wraps here. Okay, that's basically done. And it's not, this isn't quite perfect, so I'll, I'll turn these up a little just in case we get some rays. Looks like we knew what we were doing. Get those black lines on top if you can. Yeah, push it down in and I kind of twist to pull it up. Twist. Push that one down. Hold it with my thumb. Push this guy down. All right, one pleat gets taller. The one next to it gets shorter. It's kind of a give and take. Like a little community. Okay. So there's the tie up. Let me uh, show you how I finish it off. Cut it. And this is all frayed, but whatever, I don't care. Pull it back like this, create a, create a little slack and then stick it through. Do a little like little granny. And then you just grab each one of those little ends. And, and most of you will be using some string or some good sinew. I'm just recycling. And there it is. That's the tie-up. For this is the tie-up for the actual uh, supernova turned into a tropical nova that has all these chevrons. And um, the dyeing process on this will be exactly the same as the live video I did on Scott Radwalker's dye. Scott Walker Rad dyes on his channel. So Scott Rad dyes Walker. Has that live video that we called the tropical nova which he actually made a tropical nova i did not i screwed up but this here I take rubber bands I have these little rubber bands these are nice so you just can clean this stuff up matter of fact since this is long and thin and want just one little ray you won't be able to set any dye on that so i fold it back in it doesn't matter and put a little rubber band on there and then when we're placing dye, we'll place some dye right there. And it's going to be on an incline. So we'll have my lines. And then the dye will flow into these little bits right here. All right. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, this is Ken Epps Tropical Nova. Peace.